Hi, this is Mike at Siren Audio. This video is an accompaniment to the Feedback 2 Quick Start Guide. The aim of the guide and of this video is just to get you up and running with the application. Start making some sounds, make sure you've got the right things installed, that kind of thing. So if you're on Windows, you can be on XP, Vista, 7 or 8. Uh, it's recommended that you have 4GB of RAM and an ASIO compatible sound card. Um, you can use the ASIO for all driver if you're having some problems on Windows. This is a great free audio driver for Windows which solves uh, a lot of problems that people have. Windows users will need Java installed so I'd recommend using the latest um, version of Java. If you're on Mac you can have a PowerPC or Intel machine with OS X 10.4.11 or later uh, four gigabytes of RAM are recommended and you will need a particular package of Java which is Java 6 um, I will include a link to this in the description it's really important that you have this installed because the applications will not work properly if it's not so Siren Audio software doesn't use an installer you can just start using the application straight away once it's downloaded the most important uh, setting to get going is the audio driver that you're using and you can set this in the settings menu and then by clicking DSP you will open the DSP status window so to set your audio driver click on this uh, menu here and select it from the list um, this will be either the name of your audio interface or, or of your sound card or you'll see the ASIO for all driver here if you're on Windows. There are a couple of other drivers that, that are not listed here because I'm on Mac. Those are the add underscore MME and add underscore direct sound. You can try these drivers out and see, see how they work, but again, the ASIO for all driver is recommended if you're having any problems. Uh, you can use this rewire driver if you want to rewire the sound of the application into a, a digital audio workstation. So some other parameters to be aware of are the vector sizes here and the sampling rate. I'd recommend leaving the vector sizes as they are and um, if you increase the sampling rate you will increase the amount of CPU that the application uses so just be aware of that if you're working at higher sampling rates. So once you've set your audio driver just turn the audio off and on. You may need to restart the application but it will remember the driver settings uh, once you set them so just see if you can't get any sound out straight away then then try and restart the application so the first thing to do after setting the driver is to load a file we're just going to go through the file playback system and not the external input in this example video um, so we'll load a file there So you can play and stop the the audio. This is just a simple uh, playback mode. There are a few other ones that we'll discuss. So this is the um, audio file channel here, which allows you to set filters and see where it's the audio is being sent to. So by default, it's being sent to the delays. This uh, record enable button acts like a gate for these two channels. Um, and if they're sent to the delays, then this audio will be routed to this uh, delay section here. So, I often use the all channel, which is a good way of setting the um, all of the delay banks at once, because it can be a bit tedious if you if you want to set, for instance, everything to to one bar. Um, you can do that a little bit quicker with this this all channel at the top again you can set the the volumes of the individual delays and these are the delay times for each each um, each delay relative to the delay bank so let's just play the audio we're recording into the delay banks now So you can see that the audio has been recorded in. 
something to be aware of with the application is that it's a delay line, so it's a very quite a fragile representation of the of the um, of the audio that you've recorded. Like if you turn the audio off and on again, like this, you'll hear a little click in the delay, and it won't sound the same. So you really have to be aware of if you've got a a nice um, little loop recorded. Um, don't turn it off and on. Um, and be careful what you do with the um, with the delay times. So if you obviously there's lots of settings to be able to record um, the delay banks individually and the file output and lots of lots of settings there. So incidentally, the the sort of aim of the application it can be used as a live performance tool, but I use it generally to to create loops, um, to create drones and then to, to, to move them into a digital audio workstation to compose so that's the way I use it, you can use it um, as, as a live performance tool so, but it's not it's not really intended to um, to be a looper for example like a, li a live looper though you can use it in, in this way So to clear audio from the delay bank, you can click the clear bank uh, button here, which will remove the audio from from the delay bank. Again, you can use the clear all if the all channels uh, enable to do that. And one of the things that's that the application really. Um, excels at is just to, to get lots of layers kind of built up very quickly um, to create loops to create to create drones as well so this is the the kind of loop aspect of the application what you can also use um, You can also create drones as well really, really quickly. So they have set a number of short uh, delay times between about 200 and 500 milliseconds. Um, and these are great for um, creating drones really quickly and and layering up sounds so that you get these these big dense um, sort of clusters of, of audio. The other the other type of sound that the application can make is this kind of pitch delay delay um, sound where you change the delay time and that will then then change the pitch. You can change these delays individually. You can create these really um, crazy pitch, pitch delay sounds. I'm not a massive fan of those sounds, but because uh, they get tired a bit a bit quickly. Um, but you can create create those sounds with the application. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it for this video. It's just to get you up and running, um, get some sounds coming out. And I will do an, a number of other videos to explore the, the different things that you can do uh, with the application. So thanks for watching and if you have any uh, particular problems getting the application up and running, you can email me at mike at sirenaudio.co.uk.